The full terms and conditions are on our website, where you'll also find details of the BBC's Code of Conduct for competitions. The closing date is July the 22nd, and I'm sorry, but we can't return any entries. So, the best of luck. Now, rare breeds have lived on Adam's farm since his dad started to introduce them in the 70s. One of the ways to make them pay their way is to hire them out as extras on film shoots. And this week, Adam's preparing two of his favourites for their big moment. But first, he's got a messy job to sort out. We're flattening up some of our Gloucester old spots in here. These are ready to go next week. And then there's a few in here that'll be ready in a couple of months' time. And you imagine farming to be pretty idyllic, but often there are jobs that are far from glamorous. And mucking out is one of them. I used to have to do this by hand, but now I've got a machine. This machine is specifically designed for mucking out and makes easy work of it. By hand it would be back-breaking and would take much longer. A piece of kit like this doesn't come cheap though. It cost me a few grand second hand so I need to put it to good use if it's going to pay for itself. It's a bit smelly. I've great, great for lots, I have to do it by four. The old bedding will be added to our mucky and eventually used as fertiliser out in the field. Finally, I add some fresh straw and it's ready to home one of my animals. Just bringing this Iron Age sow into the loose box where she's going to stay for a few days until she goes to the boar. And use a pig ball to guide a pig. The idea is they won't run where they can't see. Hopefully I'll steer around the gate. In she goes. What a good girl. I'll give her a bit of a feed as a reward for being such a good girl. There you go. Years ago, my dad started providing animals for photo shoots and films and dramas, really as a form of diversification to help pay for his expensive hobby, keeping rare breeds, because they don't really pay for themselves, that's why they're rare. And it works really well, and we've been in all sorts of films over the years. And a sow like this, an Iron Age, was in a film called The Hour of the Pig with Colin Firth. In the film, Colin played an advocate representing animals accused of crimes. It was his job to save my pig from the guillotine for committing murder. I asked the court's indulgence a little longer. Our Iron Age pig, Guinevere, fell in love with Colin Firth, but she actually bit the actor who was playing her owner. In that film, my dad was there with the pig on set for weeks, just for a very small part in the film. And I really like to keep my animals as friendly as I can, because you never know when their moment of fame might come. Might make it one day, Doc. My Cotswold sheep have also had their moment on screen. They starred in a film called Middlemarch, where they had to run out of the way of a horse and carriage. It took us a day to get that shot, and it only lasted a few seconds. Some of our biggest claims to fame are Braveheart with Mel Gibson. We had some animals in Robin Hood, which was with Russell Crowe, directed by Ridley Scott. And my latest challenge is to train these two white parks. I've got Tony here to give me a hand. Hi Tony, got the food there ready? Yeah, right. So Tony's helped us out with lots of films over the years. What have you been in there, Tony? Oh, many years ago I was in uh, Joseph Andrews. That ended up as an X rated, didn't it? <laughs> Not the bits I was in. <laughs> <laughs> so with these white parks, we've been asked to train them to be a pair of oxen. An oxen or any cattle animal trained to work. And we hold to train them as calves, but we've got to give them a refresher and then try and get a yoke on them. So what we do is get the heads in the bucket and then try and slip the halter on. Over one horn, over the other horn, and I'll have a chip. There's a good girl. There, that was very, very good. Got yours, Tony? Got mine, Adam, ready to roll. Okay. Walk on there, walk on, walk on. Walk on. If we can get these trained well, they'll be in a TV drama, which at the moment is a secret. Not allowed to tell you what it's for. And they're incredibly strong, they could drag us across the fields if they wanted to. And uh, sometimes the directors uh, ask for all sorts of weird and wonderful things, Tony, don't they? Oh, they asked once. They wanted to put a dog in between a cow and its calf, and, uh, and I'm afraid I said no to that one. 
No, you have to be sensible sometimes. Try and walk them quite close together, because soon they'll be shackled together by what's known as a yoke. And so we'll take them for a walk. Let, them, let, them, let off a bit of steam. <laughs> Right now, you have to put the yoke on. And yokes have been used on cattle across the world for thousands of years. Basically, it's a bit of timber, comes in all different designs, that goes across the two necks of the cattle, and then there's a loop that goes under their neck. All right, Tony? That's fine. And these two have never had one on before. There's a good one. And then they'll pull from their shoulders, and the weight will be spread evenly between the two of them as a pole is attached to there, that then goes to a cart, and then they pull away. And actually, they're being very relaxed. Let's let them stand there for a minute, and then we'll try and walk, I'm sure. <laughs> it's quite um, nerve wracking because you don't know how they're going to react. And you know, if they do go mad, you've got to be ready to react and cut them loose and try and avoid them hurting themselves. But so far, so good. Take them for a walk, shall we? Fingers crossed. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll try and come your way. Walk on, man. Walk on, man. Good girl. All of it. It must be quite strange for them. They've got a weight on their necks. The chains are rattling. That's it. That's it. Ooh. Good. Walk on. Now this, so far, is pretty impressive. It isn't normally this easy. But it is early days. Ooh, good girl. Nearly spoke to you soon then. Well, that was pretty impressive for the first time out, Tony, wasn't it? Oh no, I was, I was holding my breath all the way around there. <laughs> I can breathe again now. <laughs> Good girls. Right, let's take this yoke off. Okay. That was a good start, but these youngsters are going to take a lot more work before they're ready for a film set. It takes all sorts to star in a film. I've even had requests for my chickens too. In Robin Hood, that was starring Russell Crowe, that we provided a number of animals for, they particularly wanted a black cockerel. The arts directors not only are fussy about the costume and the architecture, but also that they've got the right animals that fit that period of history. So I went off to Sirencester Market and bought this cockerel here and saved him from the pot because he was for the eating. Bought him back, he was in the film, and there were 13 hens that he was living with. And one day a fox broke in, killed all the chickens, and I found him in the stinging nettles, thinking he was dead. Picked him up, he shook his head, it was almost like he came back to life. So he was playing dead and the fox just left him alone. And now he lives in here with his new Hari. And my kids have named him Lucky. And he is very, very lucky. But not all the animals on my farm pay their way. Some are just pets. And recently we've had a new arrival. A couple of weeks ago it was my son Alfie's 10th birthday party. And as a surprise, we bought him this little Hungarian wirehead Vizsla puppy and her name's Boo and she's the same breed as Dolly although Dolly really never developed the wire hair and they're great, they get on really well <laughs> it's brilliant when you throw a stick Dolly will pick it up and uh, she'll lead Boo around treats her like her own puppy and Alfie absolutely adores that puppy in fact we all do yeah, there, you won the battle now Boo such a cheeky thing. Boo came from a lovely home and she's fitting in well, but owning the puppy is a big commitment, so I've got my work cut out. Well, Alfie has. Next week, I'm helping a farming friend shop for some Dorset horned sheep. Got it.